75 Bible shows that March is actually the first month of the year, and Sunday, yes, you heard right, is the first day of the week. Take a look. So this right here is the Bible from 1775 telling us at the time that we used to have 13 months. The first month of the year is March! Look at all the way to the end, guys. There's 13 months. 13 months! First day of the week, Sunday. Second day, Monday. Look at that. Seventh day or Sabbath, Saturday. This is, this is, um, this is the proof right here. I've always been a curious soul, but not in the way you'd expect from scholars or historians. My explorations take place from the comfort of my own home, often late into the night, guided by the soft glow of my laptop screen. This is how I ended up watching a video by Mark Pyers on his channel, Mark Inspires. What I discovered there sent me straight down a rabbit hole. Mark presented an old Bible from 1775, and it wasn't the antiquity of the book that caught my attention, it was the content. According to this Bible, the first month of the year is March, and each week begins on a Sunday. I pause the video. Sunday as the first day? March as the first month? That's not what any calendar I've ever hung on my wall has shown. The curiosity in me sparked. I wondered, if what I was looking at was true, why did everything change? Who decided to flip the script and shift the months around? And why does it feel like we might be out of step with the rhythm that was once so ingrained in our culture that it was worth printing in the good book itself? It was like finding a piece in a puzzle that I didn't know was missing. The more I thought about it, the more questions arose. What if the holidays we celebrate, the ones we've been told were based on ancient traditions, were actually aligned with a different rhythm, one dictated by this forgotten calendar? Take Christmas, for instance, often said to be a rebranding of pagan festivities. If we were following this old system, where would that leave December 25th? Would it hold the same meaning if it didn't coincide with the winter solstice as neatly as it does now? Could this alternative arrangement of time affect not just holidays, but our everyday lives? I'm not an academic with a wall of degrees, but that night, I felt a responsibility to learn more. There was a sense that by understanding the past, by peeling back the layers of changes and adaptations, I might find something essential. Something about how we connect with the universe, with each other, and how we find our place within the cycles that govern our existence. And so, I began a journey. One not through dusty library shelves or ancient ruins, but through the digital realm of information, armed with a newfound determination. I was ready to see where this old Bible's tale would lead me and what it might reveal about the world we think we know so well. Discovering that Sunday might actually be the starting point of the week necessitates a serious reconsideration of cultural and religious norms. It presents the startling idea that the day we traditionally dedicate to rest and religious observance could indeed be Saturday. Such a perspective carries weighty implications for contemporary religious customs, hinting that widespread practices might not align with this historical viewpoint. Astrologically, the impact of such a shift cannot be understated. Each day's energies are traditionally tied to a celestial body, which, according to astrological systems, can influence human affairs. Misalignment between our constructed week and this celestial ordering might disrupt the intended flow of cosmic energies into daily life. For adherents of astrology, this calls into question the very foundation of their practice, suggesting a need for a thorough reassessment of how days and their corresponding planetary energies are observed and honored. This raises the fundamental question, who was it that altered the configuration of our week, thereby altering the fabric of our lives? The catalyst for such a change is not immediately evident. It may have been an incremental process, influenced by the shifts in religious and secular authorities over the millennia, or it might have been an intentional move to distance contemporary practice from ancient traditions. One of the things Constantine did was because he wanted the pagans to worship God, Jehovah, was he moved the day of worship to the day of the sun, which is why we now worship on sun day because Sunday became a pagan day. One thing is clear, 
There seems to be a deliberate discrepancy between our current temporal structure and that of historical records, though the motivations behind this are still veiled in mystery. The departure from the calendrical structure as outlined in the 1775 Bible could imply that many facets of our daily existence are misaligned with both historical precedent and perhaps celestial design. This misalignment extends to significant dates of observance. The timing of festivities such as Christmas and Easter, for instance, might not truly reflect their original intent or season. Contemplating a realignment with this historic calendar suggests the possibility of returning to a way of life that is more authentic, perhaps closer to spiritual principles that have been overshadowed over time. It prompts us to consider whether a shift in observance to align with historical records could reconnect us to a spiritual authenticity that has been eroded. This discourse is not merely about adherence to religious rules or speculative astrological theories. It centers on our alignment with the natural and cosmic order that may predate contemporary calendars. Choosing to follow this route is about much more than date correction. It's a quest to uncover a harmony with the natural world that may have been lost. As we delve further into the contents of this ancient text, we have to wonder what further insights they may offer and in what ways these could revolutionize our current understanding of time, spirituality, and our place within the cosmos. This exploration is not only fascinating, but has the potential to be profoundly life-altering. The 1775 Bible, which intriguingly outlines a calendar year starting with March and comprising 13 months, hints at a bygone era's intimate dance with the cosmos. This historical artifact opens a window to explore how our ancestors perceived time and its connection to cosmic energy and planetary alignments. This 1775 Bible shows that March is actually